As an economist, when we travel to villages to understand uh, what is the role of men and women in the households to make decisions, we either get to meet the men group or we get meet the women group separately. And sometimes it's confusing that if they jointly make decisions or discuss about taking a decision, how do we get them together? So given the social and cultural barriers and given the social and cultural norm, we have to meet them separately. But when we started talking to them about who takes the decision, or who makes the decision, who participates in the decision, and we asked the men group, what is the role of your spouse? They usually said they do not know anything about modern agriculture. They do not know about climate smart agriculture practices. Then how can they be included in the decision making? When we asked this to the women, they said, how can we be a part when we don't know anything? And that triggered the need for information, need for equal information, not only to make them more aware, not only to make them improve their capability in their farming, but also to enable them to participate effectively in joint decision making within the family. Although still the male might be the final decision taker, but he definitely acknowledges the role of internal household decision making. And therefore, we wanted equal information to the women group. Either they are the female headed household or female within the male headed households. So within this model, what we did under the CCAS project is deliver information, climate smart agricultural practices information, weather advisories, to females in the male headed households and also female headed households, along with the male members of the male headed households. And the basic purpose was to improve technology, climate smart agriculture practices and technologies update, uh, uptake to create a behavioral change from, to me, which is the first step towards adoption and creating impact. Now that's the second thing that came to us is, uh, what information do we need to give? Usually it's said that information needs to be demand driven. So we asked the women and the men, and specifically focus on the women results. They said, we only want information about weather and pest management. But anyway, we delivered them in all the information. And what we realized, you see in the second graph is, they were listening to the information. These are voice-based messages. And I've categorized into broader groups. They were listening to every message, irrespective of it was about pest or weather management or not. They were listening to uh, climate, uh, they were listening to conservation agriculture practices information. They were listening to post-harvest management practices. And they're quite similar to the listening rate of the messages as by the men. Overall, on an average, they were listening to the messages as much as they were listening to the men, as men were listening to the messages. So we concluded that not everything has to be demand driven. There has to be a match between the supply and the demand, because sometimes they don't even know what's available available in terms of the new technologies. And that's very relevant when we talk about climate smart agriculture practices. Now, OK, information is what they have got. What are they doing? Because unless an information, information is the first step towards taking action and creating impact. So what are they doing about that information? And we ask them, what has had impacted you? The first thing, major information, thing to see is most of the women, almost more than 70% of the women did say that they are much more aware about new technologies, they are more about farming practices, and they definitely know what is the efficient and right use of inputs, which is very crucial in the context of climate change and efficient utilization for natural resource management. In terms of action, yes, they have limited role into action because still there's a long way ahead to convert that information knowledge into action. I'd like to bring to this gathering a case study or a case about Ruby Mehla, who's a woman, and you see her photograph with her husband in the coffee room as well. And we started this project in August 2013. And in November 2013, she's an educated woman, but married in um, a rich, uh, a, a rich fam farming family who, who's trying to explore more about conservation agriculture, new technologies. In 2009, uh, in 2013, November, just after three months of our first interaction with them, she sent an email to me telling, her, telling me that how much motivated she is to know, and not only her, but her mother-in-law, and also the other fellow women in that village, knowing that women has a value in agriculture. Before that, they have never heard anybody saying that women is important for agriculture, and they never thought, they felt proud about it. 
And in September 2014, when they were talking to media, which was cited in the national newspaper of India, the woman group standing on the right, she said, information is my right, and I should have it, even if I'm not able to apply it. And that, that sounded very interesting. And just on this woman day, on 8th of March 2015, she was facilitated by the national system for her critical role in her village and the neighboring villages to create that awareness that women is a crucial part of the agricultural system. But it's still too early to say that info bridging the information gap as a first step towards bridging gender gap is going to create miracles. It's still a long way ahead. This is the first, first insight that we can say as a stepping stone towards bridging the gender gap. And what I think it's important is to first to acknowledge that women is a part of the agriculture system. She has important, it's important to deliver her the information as we deliver it to the men, because somehow men do interact with the women in their families to take that decision. And therefore, extension agents need to find ways to get to the women, given the cultural and the social boundaries. It's important to realize that the avenues, policies, methods have to be created to reach them equally, even if they might not be the direct users of that information, or they might not be the first user of that information. But it's their crucial, crucial part of adoption of new technologies especially making decisions in the risk uncertainty areas when climate change and men, most of the men even themselves are not very sure whether the new technologies are going to be risk neutral to them or are going to benefit them. And, and therefore it's very important for us to keep that in mind when we're talking about reaching to this woman, reaching, getting the technologies to the households, the climate smart agriculture practices and technologies to the households. Thank you.